and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you someone that, okay, in full transparency, I had an opportunity to work with, and I've always seen him as an incredible leader because he did and he thought so many unique ways of doing things in such a, a difficult industry. And I wanted to connect with him and bring him to you. Y'all give it up for none other than Daniel Kukin. Hey, thank you, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm the Senior Vice President of Construction and Facilities for Barbin and uh, BG Construction. Um, we're a small developer property management group uh, in Houston. Um, I've been here about a year. So we're, uh, we're kind of building things up from the ground up to uh, uh, be very successful in the future. And previously, I've been at uh, Steadfast and Steadfast Living uh, and 15 years at the Dinnerstein Company. So, um, you know, lots of experience in property management, construction, um, facilities, um, you know, a little bit of everything. I've done, you know, the due diligences on a lot of properties, and turned <laughs> over a lot of units. So that's my world. Absolutely. And, it, and it's incredible. And, and as I mentioned, I had an opportunity to work with you and just watching you work and, and taking these incredibly huge projects and, and and implementing the people that need to be a part of those projects to make sure they're all you know firing on the, you know, the right cylinders was so incredible just to watch your leadership in action and, and see the creation of the things that you undertake it has always been inspiring to me. And so I love to connect with these kind of inspiring leaders, peek behind the curtain and find out what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so Daniel, I reached out to you. You shared with me three incredible uh, points that inspire you. And the first one, I would just want to jump right into this one, building teams. So share with us what that means. Why does building teams inspire you and, and how, what does that mean to you? Well, I really enjoy um, challenges and mm. I know that I can not be successful without a team. And so I want to develop my team alongside with me to attack those challenges that come up every day. And mm -hmm. um, the what, dropping into, let's say, a new company, um, building teams, you've got to get everyone on your, on your team. You've got to lead, mm -hmm. lead from the front and, and get to know each team member and assess them and figure out what their skills are. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best things I've ever done is just spending time with each of my direct reports and some of those even the next level down so I can learn uh, what they do every day and, and ask the questions, um, what do you struggle with? Uh, what ideas do you have um, to improve the processes? How do I get obstacles out of your way to make you successful? Um, ask peers within the same company, within the industry about your team. What is your impression? Um, you know, well, how have your interactions been? That gives you uh, a good idea um, of, of their strengths, but also what are the areas that I can help develop them a little yeah. bit individually as a team? And, and ask each of them where they want to be in a few years, because the goal for that is to figure out what is the right seat for each team member mm -hmm. and where are their strengths um, and how can they complement each other? And yeah. so that's where getting the team to um, get to trust each other and, mm -hmm. and figure out um, how to express I need help or, hey, I've got some free time. How can I help you? Yeah. And, and, and so that's, that's part of getting those teams built to accomplish, mm -hmm. um, you know, way more than let's say they can individually for sure, but also um, accomplish things well, not just checking the boxes, but so doing good. a great job at it. Yeah, I, and I love it. And one of the th couple of things that you shared, Daniel, that I, I really resonated with me is leading from the front. So when you're building a team, I mean, not only do you build things, you build a team and you're very intentional about how you do that. And I love how you talked about leading from the front. And then what you do next is you spend time, intentional time, getting to know your team. Uh, whether, like you said, whether it's your direct report or a, an individual below that direct report. Yeah. But what I think is valuable, and I, I believe successful and inspiring leaders do this, is they spend time getting to know them, uh, figuring out, like you said, what inspires them, what's important to them, how do they 
work? What did they need support with? So it's that awareness of your team and you're doing it from leading from the front. You're setting that example. And that's such a valuable example that you're creating with the overall team, creating that. Yes, in, in, in the construction and facilities world where I live, um, there's not much I haven't done. So I can go work hand in hand with my, with each team member and they can yeah. see that I'm not just dictating from above. I can, I'm in the trenches with them. And by the way, have done it for, you know, almost 30 years. So yeah. that's a huge help. It absolutely gives mm -hmm. them, uh, not only uh, that could be me someday, but also the, the idea that uh, I understand their daily struggles. Sure. Yeah, and, it, and it's incredible when you have a leader that has been there, done that, and will never ask you to do something that they've never done themselves. Right. I, you know, I've always looked up to those kinds of leaders that, you know, I've scrubbed toilets, I've, you know, done make readies, um, yeah. cleaned up trash, you know, whatever it needed to be done, I've done that. So when I ask another individual to do the same, I've been there, done that. And I think, Daniel, what you do, how you're, your example is you've been there and you've done that and so the team yeah. respects that and they're like right exactly right yeah. exactly right and and then really another portion of it is having the team meetings so everybody mm. on the team especially let's say department heads or direct reports um just one day a week where we get together and talk about here's what i'm doing this week here's what i did last week and Here's where I'm struggling. Does anyone have an idea? How do I handle this situation? Yeah. Because if you have a, a procurement group, let's say, that's talking into a situation that's happening at a property, they might have an idea that no one thought of. So we all get a little snow blind and we all get a little, <laughs> um, you know, uh, in a box where we're not really able to think outside it because we've got so much going on. And someone comes right. in and says, well, why don't you try this? And we're like, huh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so. What's really fun is when you do that and you kind of force it in the team meetings, but then you hear, you know, down the road, oh, they're doing it themselves without me even knowing about it. They're calling mm. each other, they're interacting, they're um, asking for advice from each other. So the trust is building, the, yeah. uh, the ideas are flowing, and suddenly, um, you know, the goals and things that you're setting, we're blowing past them because they're working together to get it done. Absolutely. And, and that brings to your second point is developing people. And I think you've touched on this quite a bit where you're having those team meetings, the, the communications and everything. Yeah. But one of the things that you you mentioned is building bench strength. Yeah. So that's that I've heard that terminology before and, I, and I've experienced it. But share with us what that means about building bench strength. Well, I, I've learned in the through the years that no one's good at everything. So you have to really um, look at yourself as a leader, first of mm -hmm. all, and figure out what your weak spots are and look for people that complement where you're not as strong, right? Good. But then figure out the weak spots in your team and, and offer them the training where you can mentor, offer uh, development opportunities. Um, I've had people where I've sent them through to construction management certificate courses, things like that to sharpen mm -hmm. those skills. Yeah. And, and, and train your replacement because it, a lot of people are afraid of that. And I'm yeah. not at all because it makes my life easier. It makes their life easier. It makes them feel valued, right? I see potential in you that builds loyalty like you wouldn't believe. It builds trust mm -hmm. and it makes life for the leader easier because um, think about this. You can go on vacation and not get 10,000 phone calls because the guys you left, the team you left back, you can trust their decisions. Yeah. And not only that, you know that they're gonna make the right ones and, and not and not need you to hold their hand. And that's where, you know, that, that makes your life a little easier in that. And at some point, everyone gets to move up, whether it's onto another company where they get mm -hmm. a better opportunity, which is okay. Right. Because, you know, we're training for everyone to, uh, to be better at what they're doing. So you move on or you move up as opportunities arise. A lot of times, as a leader, you can't move up if there's no one that can come behind you and fill the gap, right? So yeah. that's really where you're trying to develop your individuals to be your replacement someday. Wow. And Daniel, I think you probably said one of the most powerful statements is 
is train your replacement. A, a lot of us would be so like, un, you know, self self conscious that if if we get this person to be just as good as me, if not better, then I'm gonna, you know, get myself out of a job. Right. But I I love how you you share that they can move up or move out if opportunity presents itself. But at the same time, if you don't have somebody that can come in behind you and fill that gap, like you said. Yeah. you miss an opportunity to move up potentially Correct. and i believe your your lead the leadership your supervisors meaning the, the leaders supervisors will look mm -hmm. at that and say well we can't move him along or her along because they will leave a gaping hole that's I, why you want to have the the talent behind you ready to just fill in and be ready to go when it's time yeah and 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 what it does to inspire the team to say, hey, my my supervisor, my boss, my leader is lifting me up so that I can feel my I can I can get ready before I need to be ready that's to right. get to that next level. And I think that's such a powerful statement. And and again, it all goes back to Jenny, what you said before is leading from the front, having awareness of your team so that you can build that team to get them ready to replace you. I, I think that's such a that's that's the heart of a true leader right there. I mean, that's a valuable statement. So, yeah. and then the last thing you shared with me, Daniel, this is, this is pretty cool. And I, and I like this, yeah. you like the people that are usually dismissed or yes. I might call the underdogs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, explain a little more how that, in, those, those individuals inspire you. Yeah. So it, it's kind of uh, what I've done on my whole career is seeking out talent and and so in the construction world, the facilities groups, the maintenance world, um, a lot of those guys don't have a college education. Um, a lot of the, you know, there's housekeepers, ladies coming up, working hard, um, extremely smart, haven't had mm -hmm. the opportunity to go to college. Yeah. And, and a lot of times they're dismissed. Um, you know, maintenance and construction folks get a bad rap. Sometimes um, uh, people don't look at them as a resource. And I love it when I can help develop those uh, groups. And, um, you know, they might be a little rough around the edges, whatever, but man, their, their hard skills are there. They understand yeah. how to fix things. They understand mechanical operations. Mm -hmm. Put the time in, put the time in, teach them the soft skills, teach them how to do Outlook and emails and how to write POs and how to manage a budget, all of that. Again, you're, you're training your replacements coming up behind you. You're training the talent. If you're running multiple properties, you always have someone you can move around where you want them to go. Give them a chance to grow, to fail, and to succeed because Ooh. it makes everybody better and learn from your mistakes. Teach them to learn from their mistakes and it builds their confidence. So they can look at you leading from the front and demonstrating not only mm -hmm. where they could get to, but, yeah. you know, teaching them, hey, you don't have to stay in this role as the maintenance tech forever and ever. You can grow into the supervisors, the, mm -hmm. the multi-site supervisor, the VP someday. And, yeah. and it's definitely, uh, it, again, it's kind of developing individuals, but these are the, these are the group that, you know, a lot of times are just dismissed because there's an old grizzly, um, you know, <laughs> construction superintendent, but boy, right. you, you really get to know them you know they are very smart and mm -hmm. and those that's where you find the talent sometimes that's hidden wow and and, and again it all goes back to your <clears throat> being aware of the people that right. are on your team because again if you dismiss the whole team you miss out on a lot of potential a lot of talent a lot of opportunities right. and i love daniel and you are such an incredible example of leading from the front, having awareness and the big picture sense of whatever the project is, but it, the, but the people are the critical piece of the success of a leader. And when you have that awareness to what's important to them, how can we grow them? How can we develop them? How can I get this person to eventually replace, replace me? And also being intentional to go out and say, okay, these individuals that may have been dismissed before, let me spend a little extra time with them, getting to know them and seeing where their potential is and help draw that out of them. Exactly right. That is Daniel. See, that's why you're an inspiring <laughs> leader, sir. It's yeah. absolutely incredible. I, well, I love thank you. 
I love just just your big picture look at things and then you know you eventually become a leadership factory and Daniel and, and I've seen it firsthand I've seen you take individuals and help them grow to the next level and I see the trust that they have with you I see the excitement and the drive that that is created because you had the awareness of that individual and the potential and you help draw it out and push them to be successful and that just creates a whole new individual yes well thank you gary and that that is truly how i um live uh well live my life but live uh, my career because yeah. um ultimately we want to better everybody and also better just our uh industry and that's that's mm -hmm. how you do it there you go. Daniel, man, it's always great talking to you, sir. We're getting close to the end of time. But before we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity to share a closing thought with us. Yeah, I, I think it's important for everyone to realize um, you are nothing without your teams. You know, be keep your self-worth in perspective because um, no one can do everything and no one knows everything. Mm -hmm. So build the team around you so that you can accomplish so much more um, and without getting burned out and, and really you can have a lot of fun doing it in the meantime. I love it. Build your team around you because you can't do everything, but you can create a team that can do everything. That's exactly right. Daniel, amazing. As always, it's a pleasure talking to you, Daniel. Thank you yep. so much for joining me today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, if you ever get a chance to connect with Daniel, man, reach out to him, connect with him. This guy is like brilliant. He's really good. As you can tell, he's an inspiring leader. So take an opportunity to connect with them. I promise you money back guarantee you will be inspired again. Thank you so much, Danny, for joining us on the super fantastic exchange. We'll see you on the next episode. Absolutely. Thanks, Gary. Good thank to see you. you.